Hey students, uh, next up we're going to start talking about what uh, families of distributions look like in R. Uh, R facilitates the dis uh, both description and simulation of uh, common classes and families of random, random variables uh, from several different probability distributions, and there are packages that can add more if you need them. Generally, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, generally, when you have some family of distributions, let's say, for example, the binomial distribution, then there you're going to be provided with four functions for that family. There are the D functions, which are associated with the probability density function or the probability mass function of a distribution. Uh, there are the P functions, which are associated with the cumulative distribution uh, or CDF of a probability distribution. There are the Q functions, which are corresponding to quantiles, or the inverse of the CDF, or the quote-unquote inverse of that CDF. And then there are R functions that are responsible for generating random values drawn from that distribution. <clears throat> so, uh, at this point, I just want to run down through the list of uh, R, of uh, these uh, common families of distributions, and demonstrate... Uh, how R is handling them and how they're working in R. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so, we have the Bernoulli distribution, which has a single parameter P. Bernoulli random variables correspond to random variables that take the values of either 1 or 0. And, <coughs> gosh, my throat needs to be cleared out. Um, uh, these are random variables that are either 1 or 0, and they take 1 with, the prob with probability P. And p equals one half. That corresponds to a model tracking the results of a single flip of a fair coin. Uh, there isn't in R a uh, class uh, a class of functions devoted exclusively to the Bernoulli because one can recognize Bernoulli random variables as being a particular instance of binomial random variables. So you don't use any. There is no. There is no p bur d bur. Cuber or Arbor, there's no such functions. Uh, instead, what's used are the binomial family of functions. Uh, so uh, let's get started. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is create a function, a little helper function that's meant to plot probability mass functions. Uh, and uh, so I've written, so I've created that function here. Uh, you can examine its code. I'm not going to go into a great deal about it. Uh, so <clears throat> to plot the probability mass function, of a Bernoulli random variable. Uh, the possible values for Bernoulli random variables are 0 and 1. So to get the probability mass function, we use the function d binom, but we're going to tell it that uh, the size is 1, and the probability in this case, the parameter p, is going to be 0.5. So this corresponds to a Bernoulli random variable with p parameter of 0.5. Right? And uh, I'm going to plot the probability mass function for this random variable. You can see the probability mass function has appeared. All right, so uh, next, all right, so uh, continuing on. The CDF of, the, of this uh, random variable, we're going to use the p-binom function, and we're giving it the uh, quantiles, and, uh, well, okay, so I first create uh, a sequence of numbers between negative 1 and 2. Then I'm going to see what the value of the CDF is at those numbers. Again, the size is 1 for Bernoulli's. And in this case, the p parameter is 0.5. So here is uh, the uh, CDF. And as you can tell, both d binom and p binom are vectorized operations. So bur pmf, just going back a little bit, oops, uh, bur pmf is a vector. When you gave it a vector, it spat out a, a vector. It gave us the value of the probability mass function at each of the points that we fed it. Um, if we were to give it um, <clears throat> if we were to feed in a number, uh, for let's say so d binom, uh, so something and the size is one because this is a Bernoulli random variable and p is 0.5. Uh, if we were to give it something that it takes with probability zero, so like for example, Ber uh, Bernoulli random variables are never 0.5, uh, it's gonna give, uh, it's gonna give, it's gonna return zero and also warn us because it doesn't like. Uh, when we don't put integers into uh, <clears throat> into the uh, into that d function for discrete random variables, so uh, 
And similarly, the uh, Burr CDF, we gave it a really long vector, uh, a vector of numbers between negative 1 to 2, with, and that vector has length 1,000. So what we end up with is a vector as well that corresponds to the values of the CDF uh, <clears throat> uh, at, that, uh, at, at those points. So now when we plot the CDF for a Bernoulli, this is what we see. Uh, there are, there's a line here, but there is no line in reality. Uh, that's just an artifact of uh, how the plot function is working. Because what there should really be here is a jump, a solid jump, not a line connecting the two points. Uh, but hopefully you get the idea. Uh, it, it still does look essentially like a jump function. So at zero, since the probability of getting zero with a Bernoulli random variable is 0.5, it jumps up to 0.5. And when it goes to one, it jumps up to one. Uh, which is what we should expect for uh, CDFs. Uh, I'm actually going to I'm going to uh, promote this. All right. Uh, okay. Excuse me. C uh, continuing on. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, what's next? Oh yeah, Q binom, which is get it, getting us uh, the equivalent of a of a quartile uh, quantiles for uh, uh, discrete random variables. In this case, I've asked for what would be the uh, five number summary of the of the Bernoulli distribution, which doesn't really produce anything interesting because this is a very discrete random variable. It only has two values, so this actually isn't really all that helpful for us. Uh, and then finally, I uh, generate ten Bernoulli random numbers. So these would, could be understood as uh, the results of coin flips, where you get one whenever you get heads and zero whenever you get tails. <clears throat> OK, uh, next uh, class of random variable is a binomial random variable. Uh, binomial random variables are specified by two parameters, n and p. Uh, binomial random variables, as you can tell so far, they're somewhat of a generalization of Bernoulli's. Um, but you can think of a binomial random variable as representing the number of times uh, n Bernoulli random variables are 1 when the probability of seeing 1 is p. Uh, and another way to think of that, another way to rephrase that, is a binomial random variable is a sum of n independent Bernoulli random variables. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's important that the Bernoullis be, um, be uh, uh, independent. So our functions are d binom, p binom, q binom, and r binom. Uh, all of these have a, have arguments size and prop for specifying the parameters n and p respectively. So uh, here are potential numbers for our binomial random variable. We're going to have a binomial random variable where n is equal to five and p is equal to 0.5. So uh, here is the probability mass function uh, evaluated at uh, the numbers zero through five, which are all of the possible values for a binomial random variable. So we're going to plot that probability mass function. This is the resulting probability mass function for a binomial random variable. Um, <clears throat> here we have uh, the CDF. Again, we're going to, uh, well, first off, before we get the CDF, we're gonna plug in a sequence of numbers between uh, negative one through six. This vector will have 1,000 observations. We're going a little outside of the range of the binomial random variable when the n parameter is five, just so that we can get a better looking picture of the CDF. So here we now evaluate the CDF at those points and uh, plot the CDF. And again, this this is a jump function, so the lines connecting two points really shouldn't exist. Uh, but you do get this uh, jump function sense and you get the sense of uh, what the uh, CDF looks like. Uh, here's the quantile function. The quantile function, again, for discrete random variables, isn't necessarily all that. I mean, it's a little odd. It's a kind of strange, uh, but it is around. Uh, and uh, here are 10 uh, simulated binomial random variables for size parameter 5 and prob probability 0.5. So, uh, and we get 2, 3, 2, 4, 3, 2, 2, 0, 3, 3. So, uh, all right, very, very nice, very nice. Uh, next up, geometric, geometric random variables. Oops. Uh, a geometric random variable is specified by one parameter, p, and is den denoted by uh, the geometric distribution. Let's see. Um, 
And this is probably a situation where uh, I should be um, uh, looking at uh, the web page. So you, you, like uh, before, I haven't really bothered about rendering the document, but this is a situation where. Uh, we probably should see the rendered LaTeX in order to fully appreciate uh, what's being written down. So these are so these are the Bernoulli random variables. Is how they're often denoted. Uh, here is uh, binomials. Uh, so x follows a binomial distribution with parameters n and p. Uh, geometric. So x follows a geometric distribution with parameter p. Okay. So. Uh, so this is the ge geometric random variable. This is its probability mass function. Uh, this is a random variable that represents how many times the Bernoulli random variable with parameter p, uh, or you 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 create a Bernoulli random variable, and you keep creating those variables, and they're going to be zeros with uh, probably one minus p and one with probably p. You keep making them an, uh, while they're zeros, and then stop when they become a one. Or you can think of it as flipping a coin until it comes up heads. Uh, that's a similar thing. But this is allowed to be a biased coin. So the probability of getting heads is P. And the probability of getting tails is 1 minus P. So uh, we have such a random variable. Uh, here is its probability mass function. And this random variable is uh, allowed to take values, any integer value. So its, uh, it's uh, range is infinite. And uh, although it's countably infinite. Uh, so the functions for working with such random variables are dgom, pgom, qgom, and rgom. Uh, and they all have an argument prob used to represent the parameter p of the geometric distribution. So we're not going to cover all of the... <laughs> of course we're not going to cover all the natural numbers because that goes off to infinity. Instead, we'll just look at a subset. So when the numbers range from 0 to 20, and here we will get the probability mass function for the, this uh, geometric random variable when the probability of getting ahead or the probability of the sequence ending is 0.1. And um, uh, so here, uh, just as a reminder, uh, here's what the uh, what 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 vector is being produced in the end uh, when we're working with this thing because this function uh, um, PMF plot uh, is meant to work with uh, or plot PMF is meant to be fed in quantiles and uh, and their corresponding probabilities. So here is what the probability mass function looks like over that subset. But as a reminder, this is extending off to infinity. Uh, all right. So uh, next up, we're going to uh, work in a range around zero and twenty, uh, creating a vector of length. 1000 and uh, here's it the value of the CDF at those points and if we were to plot the CDF this is what it looks like this time the CDF doesn't ever actually hit one what it's going to do is it's going to increase and it's going to asymptotically approach one though it never actually reaches one uh, here's the quartile function uh, notice that one endpoint is infinite because the maximal po possible value for geometric random variables is infinity and the minimal possible value is zero uh, so this would be so number so two is roughly the first quartile, saying that roughly a quarter of the time, uh, your your uh, geometric random variable will be less than or equal to two. Uh, so about fifty percent of the time, it'll be about less than or equal to six, and so on. Okay. Uh, so uh, and uh, finally, here are some random geometric random variates. So here are some possible values they could take. So we can see that. Uh, they can be quite large. Um, the expected value of a geometric random variable is 10, which means that you roughly expect it to be around 10. But as we can see, uh, they can they can get fairly large. Um, so, uh, like the, we had one in this uh, sample of 10 that reached 27. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. Next random variable is a Poisson random variable. A Poisson random variable uh, is specified by a parameter lambda. And we're going to denote it with x following a Poisson distribution with parameter lambda. Uh, Poisson random variables are a little bit more uh, odd, I would say. Uh, but there is actually an intuition for what Poisson random variables model. They model what you might call rare events over a period of time. 
So lambda represents the average number, uh, the average success rate, or the average number of times an event occurs over that period of time. So for example, uh, things that could potentially be modeled by Poisson random variables would be the number of calls a call center receives in a workday, or how many goals a soccer team scores in a game, because there's like some rare event, which would be like a goal or a phone call coming in. Uh, that happens over some period of time, and this random variable is counting how many times that things occurs. Uh, there's this fun example. This is actually somewhat of a classic example in, in uh, statistics. Uh, the number of deaths from horse kicks in the R Prussian army annually. Again, uh, a rare occurrence. Not very many people died from horse kicks in the Prussian army. It's a rare event, but it does happen sometimes, and this random variable can model how many times that's actually happening um, over, let's say, a year. So the R functions for working with such random variables are D poise, P poise, Q poise, and R poise. The argument lambda corresponds to the parameter lambda, which is like the average number of successes that occur over a period of time. Like for example, if you want, if you're modeling a soccer team, uh, you might say on average, uh, the number of goals this team scores in a game is, I don't know, five points. So if that's the case, then uh, we're going to use a Poisson distribution with parameter five, with parameter value five to uh, model how many points they're earning. All right, so Poisson random variables, like geometric random variables, uh, can take any integer value above zero or above and including zero. So that means that they also have uh, a possibly infinite, uh, well, their, their range is, in, is uh, infinite. And uh, we're, we're only going to work with a subset, uh, in this case, uh, from the numbers 0 through 20. So we create the probability mass function. We plot the probability mass function. They uh, Poisson random variables have this more curvy-looking shape, uh, somewhat resembling a bell curve. And uh, here, are, uh, here we create the CDF of a Poisson random variable. This is what it looks like. Again, it's asymptoting to 1. It doesn't ever actually reach 1. Uh, here are some quartiles of these random variables. Uh, so uh, the smallest value is zero, and the largest is infinite uh, because there's no bound. Uh, about 50% of the time, it's going to be less than less than or equal to four. About 25% of the time, it's going to be less than or equal to three, and so on. Uh, all right, and uh, finally, here are some simulated Poisson random random variates. So all the random variables I've talked about up to this point are discrete random variables. Next up are some continuous random variables, the first of which is going to be the uniform distribution. So uh, so a uniform random variable is specified by two parameters a and b that correspond to the interval in which they could potentially uh, appear uh, or where in which their values could potentially lie. So a is the smallest value that it could possibly take and b is the largest and everything between A and B is equally weighted, hence the term uniform. Uh, the function responsible for, or the functions responsible for handling these random variables are D unif, P unif, Q unif, and R unif. All of them are specified with parameters, have uh, parameters min and max corresponding to the parameters A and B mentioned above. So uh, we're going to use a unif Q, and this time we don't need to worry about uh, plot PMF anymore. Uh, let's see. So let's uh, create uh, the the uh, region over which we could we're going to consider this uh, random variable, but we're going to be considering what's known as a, a standard uniform distribution. In which case, the lower bound is zero and the upper bound is one. So min is zero, max is one. So uh, here I computed the value of the PDF, the probability density function of the uniform distribution over this region, and then I plot it. Again, this is supposed to be jumping up. This should not be a connection, uh, but you get a sense of what the PDF looks like. It's this very square region. Uh, all right, so let's uh, get the value of the CDF and plot the CDF. This time it's hitting one, and this time it is continuous. There is no jumping going on. Um, so these two points really should be connected as they are, um, and, uh, and so on. So we have this... Uh, increasing from zero to one, in which case it, it hits one and, and uh, goes on forever. Uh, this time the quartiles really are more interpretable uh, than what we had before. 
when we were working with discrete random variables because this time 25% of the time these random variables will be less than or equal to 25 or 0.25 sorry 50% of the time they'll be less than or equal to 0.5 so this is actually more interpretable than when we were, when we were working with uh, uh, discrete random variables and here are some uniformly distributed random numbers here you can see them they look very lovely uh, next up uh, are exponential random variables so we denote random, those random variables like so although I should mention that exponential random variables there's some at some level disagreement about how they should be written down and how you specify their distribution sometimes uh, people specify an exponential random variable via its mean and sometimes they uh, specify it via its rate parameter uh, and here, since this, is a, since this is a statistics class, uh, I'm using the mean to specify it, but R actually expects that you specify the rate. Um, it, 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 in my opinion, it seems more common that the probabilists will specify exponential random variables by their rate, and the statisticians will specify by their mean because statisticians care a great deal about the mean. Uh, whereas probabilists just want to make their lives uh, easier, so they uh, and since the rate is kind of nicer to work with when you're uh, working mathematically with the exponen uh, exponential distribution, for that reason, it's a uh, it's a uh, some the, the rate is sometimes uh, preferred, and also the rate has this uh, close tying into uh, what are known as Poisson processes, in which case the rate has uh, has its own interpretation. Uh, but I'm not going to go any further into that. So in this case, I want an exponential random variable with mean 6. But for R, I'm going to have to set the rate. And the mean is 1 divided by the rate. Or the rate is 1 divided by the mean. So if I want my exponential random variable to have a mean of 6, I'm going to say that the rate is equal to 1 over 6 in R. Okay, so... Uh, here is a, oh, I guess I need to uh, scroll down a little. Okay, so um, uh, I'm going to create a sequence of numbers just for me to work with. Uh, I get the PDF for this uh, uh, random variable. Here's the PDF. It has this exponential decay uh, uh, feature that actually uh, the geometric distribution was uh, exhibiting exponential decay as well. So, uh, and in fact, that's that's to be expected because geometric random variables and exponential random variables actually have a lot in common with each other and uh you could say that you could say that the exponential random variable is the continuous analog of the discrete random variable and vice versa all right uh continuing on here we get the cdf uh we plot the cdf again it's approaching one but it's not reaching one uh, here are quartiles of the exponential distribution, and uh, here are some uh, possible values for it. Oh, look at that. It, it can get quite large. Look at that. Um, all right. Uh, next uh, distribution is the ever-famous normal distribution. So the normal distribution is specified by two parameters, its mean and its standard deviation at least in this class, I'm specifying the normal distribution by a standard deviation, and uh, in R, it's specified by a standard deviation, but in higher level probability courses and statistics courses and in the literature, the normal distribution is usually specified by its mean and its variance because it's easier to work with when you do that. Uh, so this distribution at some level is uh, modeling errors or distance from some typical value. Um, so it's the natural error distribution and uh, theorems such as the central limit theorem, which will be talked about in a later video, justify viewing the normal distribution as the distribution of errors. So uh, the functions responsible for handling the normal distribution are our D-norm, P-norm, Q-norm, and R-norm. They have two parameters, mean and SD, that you can spet, uh, set. They correspond to the parameters mu and sigma, respectively. So here I create some numbers, uh, or a sequence of numbers, and I'm going to work with a normal distribution with mean 10 and standard deviation of 2. 
So here I've computed the PDF of this random variable. I'm going to plot the PDF. There's that nice bell curve shape. Uh, I compute the CDF and plot it. And uh, here's uh, the quartiles of this normal random variable. Normal random variables are, uh, they, they can take any number on the real line. Uh, that said, normal random variables are almost effectively supported within three standard deviations in, in that like 99.7% of the time they're within three standard deviations of their mean. But in principle, they can take any number between negative infinity and infinity. Uh, so here are quartiles. And finally, here are some simulated normal random variables. All right, that's it for this video. That's it for our rundown of uh, common uh, random variables. And uh, there are implementations. So I will see you in a future video discussing the central limit theorem.